I'm Joe Tremaine, your dance master teacher. Recently, I had the opportunity to sit down with a former student of mine, and he's here with us today. He just happens to be the choreographer of Glee, that little show called Glee. And he's going to share his insights with us about this wonderful world of dance. Let's have fun with this choreographer of Glee, Mr. Zach Woodley. We didn't have babysitters, so it was go to school and then everyone had to go to the dance studio, so we all grew up dancing. Dancing's a team sport. I mean, it, it really is. When you see the chorus make this huge, you know, storytelling moment, that's just as breathtaking, I think. Be open, be patient, and get a job at Starbucks. <laughs> I went to school for geriatrics and I did um, sexuality and aging and I did a lot of recreational programs in retirement homes. So I used to um, basically keep movement in any sort of recreational program that was around. Um, and then I knew a girl that was moving out to LA and thought, let's try it just for a little bit. And then I moved out here, um, got on a scholarship program. Um, and I would basically get up at 4.15 every morning, put on my dance belt, my tights. I'd have all of my ballet gear underneath my Starbucks wardrobe. And I'd have to, have to go. I was at work from 5.15 to 10.15. And then I was in ballet class by 10.30 every single day. Just taking off my apron and my barista gear. I was like, okay, let's go, go, go. My first job was with Jerry Evans. Um, and it was dancing for Leanne Rhymes. Um, we did a couple of promo spots for her, and then he did a, he was choreographing a film, um, and I was still sort of very new into the scene, and I didn't have a union card, I didn't even, I knew what SAG was, but it was so removed from my life, and I jumped on and started working union jobs and kind of went from there. Um, I was touring with Madonna, and I was, you know, in my late 20s, and I, I have a back condition, so I was very much facing the fact that uh, my back's not going to take me much further, so I needed to sort of use what I know in a different way. And then I just started choreographing. Basically, the pilot for Glee came out, and I interviewed with Ryan Murphy, and um, it really rang true to myself as far as reading the script, and there's a bit of I think in everyone that started Glee, it was a passion project, and I, I think we all wanted just the pilot to do well. I, I don't think we could see past the pilot. I think it was just so heartwarming to us and so sensitive, and we really wanted our baby, just at least this one pilot, to be packaged so nice. Um, and then the world got a hold of it, I guess. I don't <laughs> I know there's been quite a few times on Glee that I will get referrals from other choreographers that are like, this person just moved here. They have so much, you know, talent, so much spark in them. They'd be great on the show, and then I try them out. I do, as far as Glee, it's such a young show, um, and this might sound insane, but my assistant, Brooke Lipton, she's still very involved in the convention world. so. When she comes back every weekend from a city, there's usually like five or six dancers that she's like, they're moving out in six months or, you know, they'll be here soon. So she sort of keeps a log of people that she's met that maybe are really fresh or that she met at conventions, um, younger teachers. I know when I moved out here, it was fun and games and let's, you know, oh, auditions, and let's just have fun and a, a really good time. But I think being able to find discipline and put yourself in class and make sure that you're on time and the small little steps of a work ethic will take you to where you need to go. I think too many dancers now come in and think, oh, well, I'm only 15 minutes late, or can I leave like 20 minutes early? I got to go get my friend at the airport. It, it just doesn't show well for you. Um, because it's a small community, 
we are all friendly with each other. It's not, there isn't a huge definition of boss and, you know, worker. It is sort of this symbiotic, we're creating something together. But in turn, I don't think anyone should take advantage of each other by a lot of special favors. Everyone gets one. Maybe, yeah, one. <laughs> One good favor. I, I know that everyone always says that your headshot is sort of your business card, and it is. I have a stack, yay of men and yay of ladies, in my office that I need and refer to all the time. Um, and I know I've probably hired 50 dancers just off of there are pictures that I've seen in there. And as far as updating your resume, uh, if you don't, it's sort of a sense of self-sabotage, I think. Um, if, you're not, if you're not keeping up on everything that you've done and you are doing, I don't feel like I should be interested in you as well. It's like, well, they're letting it go. I'm going to let you go, too. I, I think there's a slew of mistakes that dancers can make in auditions. I think the most important thing is staying true to yourself and not trying to become a character that you're not because it might come off a little funny or fake. <laughs> Listening at auditions is extremely important. I think I know I've had quite a few dancers at auditions that definitely want to do their own thing, which is fantastic but it sometimes doesn't really help when I'm telling you we have to work in a unit of 15 and I don't need a soloist right now so focus on what we need to hire you for and then maybe later there is a soloist part that we need that you'd be great for. Your options in dancing are pretty much unlimited at this point but what I do find challenging as far as the younger dancers that come with absolutely no proper training you do need lines like you need to have some form of a technical background you don't have to be great at it but a lot of times for most jobs that I've ever worked on you need to be able to see some sort of aesthetic that matches and it's great if you can do a lot of specialty tricks but I need to be able to plug you in from an audience perspective that you can watch a whole group and not just pops of this or pops of that. I think to say what style of dance you, people should be studying, I, I think will limit them. Um, I think working in a group setting, being in class, learning spatial awareness, learning how to, learning the powers of a whole unit doing the same thing and how moving that can be beyond just I can do this by myself and no one else can do it. I think once you start working professionally there's no excuse to stop going to class, there's no reason to stop supporting your community. Um, I mean dancing is such a use it or lose it kind of situation, it's not, it, 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 well Dancing as far as vocally, uh, you know, even with acting, I think any entertainment field you're in, if you don't keep pushing yourself, then you'll become stale. And I think you will lose a little bit of your, your luster. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and be sure to visit the Master Talent Teachers website regularly for more new and exciting videos.